Welcome back, welcome back. Another Cavs week in review. We did one last week. It's been an up and down week. Um, normally, we'd be talking about the Wednesday game, the Friday and the Sunday game, however it works out. There's normally three games a week minimum, but I talked. I uploaded it late last Wednesday, so we talked about the Thunder game from Wednesday. So we're only really talking about the Warriors and Kings games. So obviously, we're recording this on a Tuesday, so just lost to the Kings. It was pretty ugly. Um, they couldn't seem to miss. And we even shot really well. That was like one of my things that I touched on last week where I was saying, we're getting open looks. We're just simply not making them. And we actually made them, but it didn't matter because they were just making more. So like literally like us scoring 120, that should be an auto win every single time, but it just wasn't. And then the Warriors game, we dominated them again. Uh, a couple runs to an, each way i just did a film breakdown on that game go check that out but please go check that out yeah i just think that the warriors game was really good and i thought that even the, the first one i thought was a sign i was like all right all the guys are back it's a sign we're good and we played the thunder game kind of got spanked in that made a late push nothing came of it then we play the warriors again kick their ass in golden state this time and i was like okay now we're back officially then we play the kings and we look like shit um, they did beat us twice last year, so I don't want to like act like the Kings are a bad team, but I just simply think that the Cavs are a better basketball team than the Kings, and it just didn't look right. Um, J.A. has played great since he came back. He has been aggressive, rebounding, off, like offensive rebounds. Like We're definitely putting an emphasis on rebounding. Uh, I wanted to see that more, and he's been doing it. Mobley's played better than what I was talking about last week. The last two games, I felt like he's kind of asserted himself more and was playing a little bit stronger, not as soft. DG, I need to be more aggressive still. Um, turnover numbers were really, really bad last week. Still not great, but better. Um, and one thing I want to touch on, I'm curious to Finn, your opinion on how they would get out of this. But teams have started – the Kings did it all last game. It was really annoying. As soon as there's a pick – because the Cavs run a ton of pick and roll. They blitz both sides, and they double-team the ball with Donovan or Darius every single time, especially when one of them's not on the – when they're both on the floor, it's not as often. But when one of them's on the floor, it's like an automatic double-team off the screen, and it's like a pass to the big, and then whatever happens, happens. But like – it's just consistently getting the ball out of Donovan or Darius's hand. And it's really annoying because I can't figure, I can't think right now of what you would do to get out of that while still getting Donovan being able to handle the ball on a pick and roll. Whoa, slow down gang. If you're liking this content here, I really appreciate it. If you'd like comment and subscribe, it's free. It takes zero seconds. I make sure to like comment and subscribe to all the creators. I like watching because I know it makes a huge difference for them. Just like it makes for us stick with us. TOT Faithful, we love you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out more videos. Typically on a double screen blitz like that, you'd want someone to flash and have the big go to the bucket instead well, of just throwing it right to him on that, like the, the elbow or wherever he's screening at. Try and throw a skip pass or try and dump it to someone to your left or right and have the big start move and catch it in stride. And I know you're asking to get it back in their hands for that kind of thing. I would probably just – Throw it to the big, have him throw it back. He doesn't have to roll and get a bucket or or pass out of it, like and get it back. Try and get a switch. Do as much as you can to get those switches, like, or maybe don't run as many high screens. Yeah, it's just with the cat. I don't know. I, yeah, I think we have to not do that, and like I think we're gonna have to rely a little bit more on ISO ball. But the Cavs are very like this year have been very movement and pace, but in the half court specifically. It's been a lot. It's like always. It's been a ton of pick and rolls. I think and one of those pistol screens where there's two, two, uh, a double screener. Where there's one, one here, roll. one here. Come across. Yeah, one play. rolls, one fades. I could negate that. We do that a lot, but it's still they're still doubling it. Um, ah. and like I trust Evan and Jay to make passes, but they're not consistent passes. Like down the stretch, we were kind of making a little push. We were down like twelve with like six minutes left in this Kings game. And it was two passes in a row that J.A. threw to Evan on a lob that was one or Evan threw one to J.A. that was eight feet over his head. And this other one, Jarrett threw behind Evan and went out of bounds, like just stuff like that. Like they're both good passers, but not 
they're not Darius or Donovan with the ball. And it's, this is the beauty of basketball. It's I know. chess. I know. And I'm trying to I was trying to think all week about how you would change it. But Did you touch on it in the breakdown? Or was it just the Kings who were doing it to you? Just the Kings mainly, because the Warriors they just it was easy to dominate them inside, so we had everything open. But, I think doing a double screen or maybe even like a guard guard screen so that they can't double it because then you dump it to the other guard. Yeah, we were doing like a it wasn't a double screen, but like a lot of pick and fades instead of pick and rolls with guards on the wing. But then they would have I don't, it was they played very good physical defense against us, which is what we had They're trouble tough. with. But um, no, I just felt like it's not going to be the longest week recap because it's only two games. But I don't know. I can't tell what the season is going to be right now. I'm not I'm not low on the Cavs, but I'm definitely not high on them. Go ahead, Slim. I know you watch the game, so. <clears throat> Specifically with the Sacramento game, um, this was Deer and Fox's first game back, so I think I think it's deserving of a highlight. Their win and their performance is deserving of a highlight coming from him being back on the floor, getting straight back to it, and getting the dub, which was a big. A big time, big time dub for the Cats against Cleveland, as Cleveland being a, a great team in the East, knowing getting a feel out for your competition and and what playing the rest of the East is gonna feel like. Um, I think that uh, that shows the the caliber player of De'Aaron Fox and and how he's he's ready to lead his team again in the West to to win big games and make it to the postseason. You know he played great. Sabonis played great. I hate the I hate Sabonis. I really do. Him, Kevin Herter, I they're the worst, dude. They're awful. Maybe no, I just don't like. Bonus, I, I gonna, bonus grinds my gears. I was gonna say I was gonna say maybe I just don't like white NBA players, but that's not true. Whoa! <laughs> I like because I love half the white NBA players. It's just mainly those two. But who was the um, other one? Kevin Herter. Yeah, dude. He Everywhere me. he goes, he torches you. I dude, it's every like I was literally me and Finn are doing a ladder challenge. I was literally going to put him ten plus points in it, but I just couldn't do it to myself. Couldn't do it, that guy. I couldn't, couldn't do, do it. it. Um, Check out last years. ladder challenge video on TikTok. I no, just real quick because you got my wheels. Video. You got my wheels turning. Before we move on, it's a guard guard pick and roll, or guard guard pick and pop. Honestly, like a short roll or a pick and pop, because then they try and throw that flash double, and it gets dumped immediately to another ball handler. And then you can either run another uh, screen off of that, or you can have them attack the cup. Yeah, I think Ooh. I think another thing that we're missing right now is Isaac's injured, and he's like one of our better downhill players. So like, if he gets that kick out, he's made his threes so far this season. So I think he can consistently hit them. But if he goes and drives, like, because he'll go and just run into someone, and I think him doing that just makes the defense have to relax a little bit so missing that Karras has played really good minutes for us man great defense, and like kid. like he's playing great defense he's scoring like he's averaging like 18 i think now by um, the best he's played he's playing like our second best player right now i'm not even kidding um he's playing really good would, ball. would it be would it be crazy if i said Karras levert shows flashes of uh potentially being better than Jalen brown yeah that's crazy. Man, you're saying care. I'm going to not second that one. But you know what I'm going to do with that, Slim? <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's what I was waiting for, baby. No, I've loved what Karras has done this year. He's been still Karras where he goes up and down throughout the game. And like in the Kings game, he was on the floor half the time. He was yeah. even standing upright. Like it was wild. And he's um, a body to the wood guy, dude. But no, I mean, he played well. Like Donovan has been started off really hot. He hasn't been scoring at the clip you would like. Um, the Kings played really good defense on him. Is he just not I, being assertive? Donovan? Yeah. No, he is. He's just shot 21 times, even. Okay. Or more, might even be more than that. But like, I think Darius has to really take another step for this team to be as good as I think Cavs fans and myself included think they can be. I, I, he needs to average that twenty 
two points, 24 points per game. I think we need to have like kind of more of an even split between him and Donovan. I think he's averaging around 17 right now. It's not good enough. That's it's, not. it's not. He's uh, fully he, capable of scoring. You 20. know what the Cavs need to do? <laughs> wow, what a tease. What a tease. Um, That's a crazy tease, man. 12. That was a big time tease. That was a crazy tease. <laughs> <laughs> what do they need to do? What do I the Cavs need to do? I didn't know if y'all could hear me or not. So, uh, <laughs> my fault. But, um, not, the Cavs need to play Imani Bates for real. For, for real. I, it's tough. thank like, you. I don't hate it. He, I could just, be, he could be the one setting those screens. I no, he no, he'll get he's like, light, but I'm saying like, he, but he's just not at the level mentally of NBA basketball yet. We saw him in the, in the timeout. What we saw him in the timeout game one, yeah, true. But he like, was on La La Land, like, he's just not. In and he's not NBA mentally ready yet to me. And like, believe me, I want him to play, and I wasn't high on him coming out. You guys are gonna let me hear that for in his entire Cavs career. Yep. But I think right now the only person I could see him taking minutes from is Dean Wade. And as much as it pains me, and as much as it you was annoying, Dean Wade. I don't like Dean Wade at all. But he does guard a big, and Imani can't guard a four. But you gotta give him some touches. I'm not saying I would. I think it would be good because he can give us some spark shooting, and he also has size. But especially with Isaac so out, physical, that's the guy you want to set those screens and catch the ball on the roll, and you're getting blitz like that. And if other teams pick up on what the Kings are doing, that's going to be a pain in the ass. I just don't trust his decision making right now Very enough fair. to be out there, and it's a fair critique. I think that's what the G League is for him doing that in order to get mentally better, but. I think later in the season we might see him in spurts, but I think our rotation's pretty much locked down. I would prefer to see less Dean minutes. Um, <laughs> Matt said a nice Dean paragraph the other day. He did. Um, he did win the player of the game or the junkyard dog of the day or whatever, <laughs> um, which really grind my gear. He did start the uh, started the fourth Yo, quarter. Somebody get me hang a junkyard dog of the game, dude. Huh? Me hang better get that chain on soon, baby. I know he needs to have like a five three point game and we win by like ten. How's he been playing? Solid, not amazing, not bad. He's played better defensively than I could have ever asked for. Struess could be a decent guy for that pick and roll too. He's yeah, he's doing. He just as much. I thought he was better at it. He's good, really good with bigs when he's handling the ball, but when he has to create for himself, it's painful. Man. Yeah, he dribbles like me. Um, wow. That's yeah. Low. Yeah, it's he does very high dribbles. I don't know, but no, I think Max has been really good for us. Played a great game against the Kings. It just simply wasn't enough. But yeah, I mean that's Cavs week in review. I'll keep it simple. I'm excited for next week. We play Wednesday against the Blazers, and then we got a nice little home stand. We play some really good teams throughout. But I'm excited. But shout like, out the 11 seed Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> but like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.